Welcome back to Elden Ring everyone, uh, here I am on the Weeping Peninsula inside the first Church of Pilgrimage where we are going to be collecting our first sacred tier of many to come because these are pretty important. Towards the end of the game in my last playthrough I've definitely noticed that my heals weren't going too well, like they weren't as strong as they could be. I honestly wasn't really collecting these secret tiers. Not secret tears, sacred tears. Uh, but that's definitely something we need to change for this playthrough because... Especially with the FP stuff, you know. It's gonna be pretty important. Although I don't know how much HP I'm really gonna have by the end because... Obviously we need a lot of stat investment. So yeah, a couple of things that have happened since the last episode. I was down here in the demi-human forest ruins. Uh, and I actually forgot that killing that demi-human queen gives you a spell. The spell I got is this crystal burst. Uh, fires a burst of crystalline sorcery, glintstone crystal shards. This sorcery can be cast repeatedly and while in motion. Charges increases, charging increases potency. Only issue with this thing, uh, it's one of these spells, one of these shotgun type spells. Uh, and these are never useful. These are always terrible in Souls games. Like, it's actually incredible how terrible this thing is. I'm gonna try demonstrating it right here. It does like jack shit damage. And it happens to be slow as hell too. See, even charged. Yeah, you have to be fully charged and that close to the enemy for this thing to deal any semblance of normal damage. Just think about that. Again, I'm not too surprised because all of these types of spells are like this in Souls games. These shotgun, except the only exception is uh, Dark Bead. That one is good. But aside from that, terrible. Yeah, let's talk to Melina and let's hear Marika's own words. All right, what does America have to say? Always. So at this point, I guess she was still chill with the Tarnished. Uh, I don't have enough to level up. And yeah, we're good to go. We're good to go. The other thing I've done, I've done this Earthborg Cave, which had a stupid bear in it, which was very difficult. This Mourn Tunnel, which contained upgrade materials, I will need to use those. And of course, I haven't done the Tombs or Catacomb, because that area is fairly advanced. Uh, so what we're gonna do is let's take out the earth tree avatar. I feel like that's gonna be fairly easy and hopefully that's gonna give me some physic mix that will actually be useful. Then we're gonna go down, the plan for today is go down here, hit up this for more sacred tears. I think there's one here as well. And of course the merchant shack here which contains the little lantern you can pick up. Probably the most crucial item in this game, like ridiculously useful. Don't hit Torrent. Don't even think about hitting Torrent. Yeah, so first Earth Tree Avatar. Let's see what happens. If you think I'm gonna pew pew, hell yeah, I'm gonna pew pew. It's gonna be easy. Don't do that. This is not going to be the last Earth Tree Avatar <laughs> we're gonna face. Like, there's so many of these fucking things in the game. So many of them. And this is one of the easier ones. 
not, not just because of how much it deals to you in terms of damage but some of the other ones are like really like in a lot tighter spaces and all that like here there's actually room to maneuver with torrent but maybe they're gonna be way easier with F when I just spam them to death with magic because I can keep just out of their range so I feel like the one that clones itself in the Altus Plateau that one is the worst one in my opinion uh, I feel like that's gonna be a challenge still but yeah it's always the damage with these things and I am very weak comparatively thank you those still of course that's some cheap shit they're already supposed to be dead all right what do we got what rings you got bitch opaline bubble tear and crimson crystal burst I think the opaline is the one that blocks damage which is actually very very useful cool that was easy I really hope all of these <laughs> earth tree guardians or earth tree avatars are gonna be this easy with spells because man did I absolutely fucking hate fighting these things by the end uh, aside from the fact that they're boring because if you haven't noticed they are essentially the asylum demon uh, it's just simply the asylum demon but besides that it's just a million of them yes yeah, people have pointed out and it has taken me a long, no, no, not a long time, I've noticed it, but there are so many animations recycled from the previous games. I think people pointed out that even the, fuck, what is it called? That, like, tree thing? What is the tree boss called? You know what I mean. I only fought one of them, but there's apparently, like, a million of those as well. Uh, that one is recycled from an unused Dark Souls 3 enemy as well. Alright, cool. This is gonna be the second thing I wanna hit up. This little ruin here. I'm not gonna do the Selen questline. Because I know there is a... What the hell? Oh, that's behind the wall. There's like a copy of Sorcerer Selen in one of the ruins here and I think that's definitely the re related to her quest line but I think that only triggers once you I guess you have to buy all her spells which we are gonna do anyways so I'm not gonna touch that until we actually get there and do that having these Trina lilies is very useful. Hopefully I won't need them this time around for Godskin Duo, but the Trina Lily is what you use to make the the sleep stuff. So that's pretty damn important. Again, I do have a feeling that with the what you call it, things like Comet Azure and all these spells, I will have an easier time. But you never know. It's always worth having a backup. And Trina's lilies are pretty much it for me. Cool. Easy, let's move on to the next church. I'm, you know, the journey between these is fairly inconsequential. Plus, I do really like this area. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite areas sort of atmosphere wise I really just like the way it looks the, the rain and just like the general vibe of it this area has vibes we'll do the thing with this later we will actually need to pay attention to these because Renala's soul especially both of them like both of the items you get from Renala are sorcery related and both are pretty damn strong so that's something we'll need to sort of pay attention to ok 
God, this is so easy. They're idiots. All right. Oh yeah, and I just talked the whole spiel about the sacred tier and I didn't end up using it. Let's just fix that quickly. Also, I think we can level up, right? Yes, we can. Put some points into HP. We do need that in that HP a little bit as well because I'm going to be fucked if I don't like mm, I think this setup is good for now. All right. No melina dialogue, we can get going. Next up on our list is the Isolated Merchant's Shack, which I think is that building over there. I didn't show this in my first playthrough, I did it in sort of that weird time before I had Elden Ring's exploration, Elden Ring explorations sort of thought up as a concept, but I was still sort of exploring. So yeah, that's gonna be something that I think is just worth showing here. This is a nice cozy little place. You could fix it up a little bit. It would be a tiny house for sure. Airbnb that shit. What up? I love their masks. Alright, this is what we want. The lantern. Cool. And that's about it. He has some other useful stuff, but... Eh. Alright. The last thing here is that tower that takes you to Lane Dell, but that's not really... It's honestly not that useful. It's amazing how much how much more efficient you can be when you know where shit is in this game. Incredible. I uh, People have talked about this online. You know, I did look at quite a lot of commentary and all that for this game. And people do say that your first playthrough, which is true for any Souls game, but your first playthrough of this game ends up always being the longest because you just are looking at everything and then as things go along you sort of start to filter the dungeons you go to and all that. I completely get it because that's exactly what I'm going to do. Like, there's just a lot of places where it's simply just not worth going with this build. something that you know people sort of were debating and that's kind of the debate of having a static open world versus uh, fixed or like a randomized open world static and fixed are the exact same thing but you know what I mean certainly if there is some randomization element that does make the replayability much higher but in my opinion, the disadvantage of that being that you cannot create as interesting of a world. Because you always have to like randomize stuff a little bit. Is that a chinchilla? Okay, let's not kill the chinchilla. We're exclusively hunting Madness Hollows. <laughs> that flame. Ailing village. I do like how they give you sort of hints of this. This like madness stuff. Weathered straight sword? Wait, there's a weapon like that in this game? Huh. Interesting, interesting. We're gonna... Uh, I kind of don't want to do it because it's kind of a dick ending. I've heard about the three fingers ending in this game. That's the bad ending. Like, very clearly. The bad ending, you know. In some of the other Souls games, they keep it a little bit more ambiguous. 
but in this game there is a clear dick ending sort of like demon souls where you kill your waifu it's not good looks that's for sure the flame of frenzy is an incantation don't worry we'll we'll get to those as well those are gonna be dealt with as well just a little bit later and honestly i think that's it for this village i know i was like i did explore this place a lot but i don't think there's anything else here Yeah, we can hit up the side of Grace and go. Alright, well, I'm thinking now that we are sort of officially out of, officially out of things to do. Aside from going to Castle Morn, which is a little bit advanced for this build so far. Yeah. No other way to go but forward. Let's get back to Stormvale Castle. And of course, I'm fully aware that you can skip Stormvale. Uh, I do know about the skip, but why would you want to do that? I feel like unless you're really going for some speedrun strats, there is no... Like, there's no worth in breaking the progression. At least to that extent. Later on, after this place, it sort of doesn't matter. You're pretty much just constrained by your levels and all that, but... Here, I feel like it still does. Does Melina not have any dialogue here? Nope. This guy does, though. God, this guy's creepy. And apparently he's like a stalker. I didn't know this. I saw a video of it that he like follows you and he, he actually springs some traps on you. He looks like a creeper too. Like, don't tell me he doesn't. Look at that hair. Like, get some conditioner, bro. Yeah, 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 cool. I thought he. So he opens up as a merchant, I think. Alright. God, I haven't been in this place in so long. This place is going to be interesting. This is uh, one of my favorite legacy dungeons. Probably second only to Lane Dell. But it do have them sword hawks who are annoying to say the least. But maybe with Pew Pew it's going to be just a little bit less irritating. Actually, I haven't been that way, ever. There's this, like, outcropping here. Yeah, I haven't been to this back area here. There's so much to these areas, these legacy dungeons, that it's... Oh, shit, yeah. There's a lot of you. Fuck. There's three of them. Alright, alright, I got the message. Okay, so let's try a little bit of a smoother approach here. Just that, ra that range on the spells. Oh, don't, don't fucking... Ugh, idiot. Yeah, don't aggro two of them. It's like the last thing you want to do. Thank fuck that tracks so well. It's a smithing stone three. Speaking of... Bro, I really gotta upgrade my weapons. I don't know why I haven't been doing it. Thank fuck that works on the sacred seals as well. Not sacred seals. I'm all over the place today with 
talking some bullshit. I don't even know what the hell I'm saying. Sacred tears thankfully work on the cerulean flasks. It's all this terminology, man. All right, so this is a dead end. But we can get back here a little bit quicker. What the hell? That Those clouds, man, they're quite something. I do like the skybox of this game. It sort of has like this otherworldly feel to it. As it should. Oh yeah, they already put a thing here. Checkpoints are fairly frequent. Stormwell cliffside. In the morning. Nothing better. Grab a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's not exactly the most threatening sound, is it, in the world? It's not. These are sort of the first enemies that are not Godric soldiers, but they basically act the same way. There's a sword guy, spear guy, all that. I should have gone back. Yeah, and I was just talking about the upgrades. Speaking of... Uh, where did I have that thing equipped? The, the bottom one, right? Yeah. This might actually be quite useful in some places here. Because as I found out, which, you know, I totally didn't put it together. Why there's a cutscene that plays. Later on when we go into a random room. It's because that asshole who... Talked to us at the start is gonna lock us in. He's like, Patches Jr. Oh shit, I haven't done the Patches cave yet, have I? I have it unlocked, but... Haven't gone to it yet. That's okay. We have plenty of time. It's incredible, like, when I was playing this game here on my first playthrough, this section was mad easy as well. I didn't really have trouble with the early game. That's why I'm saying that I'm curious and waiting for the late game, because it's when I sort of started to struggle, I think partially due to my weapon. So I'm really, really interested in how much of a difference Sorcerer is going to make. Because I can just tell it's OP. I think that's pretty much evident. That I've basically not had a shred of trouble with any enemy so far. So I think if you... I think if you now go back... Let me just try this. Shit. I didn't want to fall off that much, but yeah, look at this. Oh no, that's not him. It's just the corpse of one of his buddies. You can see him like creeping on you. But I don't know where he is. Bummer. Anyways, that's the type of shit I like in my Souls games. These types of little random events, which you might not even notice unless you're like really paying attention. There he goes. Little dick. You can hear him laughing. What he doesn't know is that I have Glintstone. And I'm still gonna get fucked up by this guy. <laughs> Come on, let's be optimistic. Can he be harder than Radagon? I don't think so. Cool. Told you. No way he's harder than Radagon.
Let me just check these out, because I have this thing which is useless. I'd rather have guard counters. I'm not using either one anyways. Or we have the Spell Drake Talisman, which boosts magic damage negation. Uh, that's gonna be wholly useful. Alright. This is of course still the early part of Stone Veil before it opens up. But yeah, like again, like what what I wanted to say is I really want to sort of try to explore more routes in this place. Although I feel like I got a pretty good look at this area. My first journey. Aside from really I don't know, like not exploring the the main entrance part. Which, to be fair, you shouldn't really be exploring. I got through most of it, I think. By the way, I didn't mention this, but I used up that Baldachin's Blessing. I actually didn't forget it this time around. And there's one thing here that I've not taken a look at. It's a pretty hidden thing. The, the Godric face. Not Godric. Uh... Godwin. Yeah. Keep him track of all these names, man. I do like the naming conventions, though. Like, when you think about it, this is... Shit. Fuck, he's fast. When you think about, like, naming of, like, royalty and all that, having sort of shared family names does make sense. Obviously you had Gwendolyn, Guinevere, Gwen, all that shit. And the same holds true here. Just keeping track of all the god the god characters, that's what's difficult. Because it's like Godfrey, Godric, Godwin, Morgoth, Moog, Melania, or Millennia, Mikola, and then Radon, Radagon, and Renala. That's like the sort of the R's, the G's, and the M's. Apparently, it's just a coincidence that it, they all spell George. It's the George R R Martin acronym. Apparently, that's a complete coincidence. Coincidence, which I sort of don't believe, but. Let's give it to him. Let's have the boy have it. Just hope he comes out with fucking Winds of Winter. Right? It's all you can hope for. But I don't think that's gonna happen. To be fully honest with you. Cool. Let's also do this thing. All right, then. No, don't read too much into it. I've well, no grudge against you. My being a prisoner is no fault of yours. Besides, I don't mind smithing. Despite my differences, the weapons get stronger all the same. But time, technique never fails. So, so I don't think you can get a bad end. I mean, a good ending to this. I don't know. We'll have to vati this up because I don't know the lore. Alright, short sword. And the astrologer's staff. I should have done this the other way. Doesn't matter. My staff is strong enough and I'm not sure how much this affects the actual damage, honestly. Again, I don't have a lot to cut out from today's episode. This was pretty smooth sailing here uh yeah let's see let's see let's see here we have Stormvale, and we're going to explore it in the next episode so what i'm gonna go ahead here and do i know this episode might be a slightly shorter one but that's just how it i feel like it sort of works out perfectly with the co content yeah we'll take a look around the castle 
and yeah, see, see what we get to. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sorcerer Guide for Elden Ring. Or Sorcerer Run, I should say. If you did, make sure to give this a like, comment, subscribe. As always, turn on post notifications. And I will catch all of you next time. Take care and peace out.